Hi guys, how's it going? Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We're back and we are going to be solving a bending moment diagram. Okay, so what a bending moment diagram is, essentially is it's a, it's a graphical representation of how a beam reacts to its external forces, both in shear and in, in moment, okay? And how we're going to start a bending moment diagram is first we're gonna take a look at what's given to us, okay? So, uh, and, and let me also start by saying that this is really, really important. Uh, this is gonna come up in the next series in Strengths and Materials 2. It's gonna come up in Structural Analysis, all right? And you're gonna have to be really, really good at solving bending moment diagrams. Uh, that's a really integral part of being a civil engineer. So, you know, really focus on this. Do 10, do 15, do 20 of them at home and really make sure that you understand every step of what's going on here, okay? So, uh, with that being said, let's, let's start solving this and let's just take a look at the diagram first, okay? So we're given a beam uh, labeled ABC, okay? We have two meters here and one meter here, so three meter span. We have a distributed load on the right side here, okay? And we have two supports. We have a pin support here. Let me draw that for or let me write that down for you. This is a pin and this is a roller, okay? And the question is asking us to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams, okay? So, okay, when we have a problem like this on, your, on the exam, the first step is to find the reactions, okay? So we're gonna find the reactions at both supports. That's always the first thing that we're gonna do, okay? So we're gonna start by drawing uh, a, a T-scale, free body diagram of our beam and we're going to do it directly below the beam here and we're going to make it so that it's in line with the original drawing okay so we're going to go ahead and do that okay and there's a reason for this one we want we want to work as cleanly and neatly as possible okay but it, it's going to make it easier for our professor to mark and that is nice for us because he will see how nice we do our problems and he's going to give us a good mark okay so we have a, again, 1.5 kilonewton per meter, okay, here. We have a reactionary force here, and because it's a pin, okay, we have our AY, and we also have AX, right? So the pin is resisting movement in the X-axis and the Y-axis, okay? And we have a roller at C, okay? So C is not restricting movement in the X-axis, so there's no reaction force but it is restricting movement in the vertical direction, okay? So, and also we have to resolve the distributed load, okay? And how we do that is we just multiply uh, the distance that the distributed load covers times its value, okay? So 1.5 kilonewton per meter times one meter, the meters are gonna cancel, and that is going to give us a force here of 1.5 kilonewton, okay? And that's point B, and we're going to just write one meter and two meters again, okay? So how we solve for AY and CY is we're gonna take the moments about those two points, okay? And we'll start with AY, all right? And we will say the summation of the moment at A, okay? And we're going to give a positive direction here of counterclockwise, okay? And let's just start taking the moment, all right? So we have right here, we have two meters to B, and then the force is actually acting halfway between the distributed load, okay? So that's 0.5 meters on this side, and 0.5 meters on this side, okay? So the total distance from A to the force is 2.5 meters, okay? And the force is acting in the negative direction. So we're going to say that that's 2.5 meters, okay, times the force, which is 1.5 kilonewton, okay? And we, the only other force that's acting is CY, okay? And CY is acting in the positive direction, so we're gonna give that a plus. And the distance is the full span, which is three meters, okay? So we're gonna say three meters times CY, and we're going to equal that to zero, right? Because the beam is in equilibrium, all right? When we're finding the reactions, the beam is not moving, okay? The beam is in equilibrium, so it's equal to zero, all right? And all we have to do is solve for CY. So solving that equation here for CY, we are going to get that it's equal to 1.25 kilonewtons, okay? And because we didn't get a negative for CY, the direction that we assumed it to be in when we drew our, our free body diagram is correct. So it is acting upwards, okay? So let's find 
the reaction at uh, A, right? Because we found it at C, let's find it at A, and we need to take the moment at C, okay? So I know that a lot of people will tell you to now, at this point, take the summation of the forces in the Y and just, you know, isolate for A. And I don't suggest that because by taking both moments like this, it takes maybe a minute longer, but there's a check at the end. So there is a chance to check our reactions and make sure that they're right, okay? Because if we solve the reactions incorrectly, then everything past this point will be wrong. So this step is extremely important, okay? So <laughs> let's start by taking the moment at C, okay? So the moment at C, well, we have this 1.5 kilonewton force and that's 0.5 meters from C. And what direction is that? Well, that is in the positive direction, right? It's acting counterclockwise. So we are going to say positive sign, 0.5 meters times 1.5 kilonewtons, okay? And we have AY, which is in the negative direction. So then we have AY times three meters, okay? And that's equal to zero. And what do we get from that? Well, we are going to get that AY is equal to 0 0.25, 0 0.250 kilonewtons, okay? Now, the check that I wanted to show you, and this is a little bit of a trick, and I highly suggest that you do this during your test, is that the summation of the reactions should equal the summation of the external forces acting on the beam, okay? So we go to our free body diagram, and all we see for the external forces is this 1.5 kilonewtons, okay? So this 1.5 kilonewton should equal the summation of these. So 1.25 plus 0.25 is equal to 1.5. And as we can see here, they are the same. They're the same, which means that our reactions are correct, okay? That's a good trick, use it. That's it for the reactions. We solve for them here, okay? And then in the next step, we, I'm going to show you how to use the internal forces and derive the equations to write the shear force and the bending moment diagrams. Come back for that.